okay. And I'll hand it over to Carolyn. Beautiful. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks so much. Okay. I invite you all to settle into your chair, feeling your sit bones being supported, your spine supported, feeling that support of the universe. And breathing out, closing your beautiful eyes and coming into your center. That's the way. That's it. And allowing all your facial muscles to melt down. And your shoulders to drop. Coming down through your torso. Your hands fully supported. And your feet firmly planted on the floor. And at this moment, I invite you to go even deeper down through the earth, connecting into our beautiful planet. And you're a part of that planet. Letting everything go that you no longer need at this moment. And inviting up that earth energy, that practical grounded energy coming up through the earth, up into your body, pulling it up through your legs, through your torso, up to your heart. And then I invite you to go up beyond, up and out your crown, out beyond our sky, out into the cosmos, and allowing beautiful light and love energy to come down from the cosmos, from creator, coming down over you and through you, all around you. And again, meeting that practical grounded energy in your heart center. And now we have that creative intelligent energy and that practical grounded energy. And there's a third energy, that love connection energy beaming out from your heart. to someone that you believe needs a little love right now, sending it out to them. Knowing that we are a channel for love. And I invite you to go into your imagination. floating up and out into a cosmic library. And there in the library, you see a volume, a new book. And you're so excited to get that book and you reach for it and you pull it off the shelf. And on the front cover, which is the favorite color of yours is your name and your friends' names and your colleagues' names and people you respect. And you open the book to your chapter. And you look at the title. What's the title of the chapter that you would write right now in this moment? The chapter for your life.
And as you flip through to the last page of your chapter, this moment, you notice the message of that chapter. What's the message you most need to receive right now? And there it is written on the page, the chapter that you wrote with the exact message that you need to receive. And I invite you to pull that into your heart. Pull it in. knowing that you're here for a purpose, for a reason. And bringing that message back with you as you open your beautiful eyes and come back to the room. And if anyone wants to write their title chapter or their message, or anything they'd like. If you'd like to write that in the chat, that would be lovely. Thank you. I pass the, pass the baton. Thank the you. I was, just, I was just leaving a few moments for people mm. to write in the chat box if mm. their titles coming to people. Right. Thank you, Carolyn. So uh, before Mary introduces everything, I just wanted to share uh, my screen so you can all see the title of this book and the, and the people that were involved in the co-creation of this, of this work. And, whoops. There we go. So Virginia Satir's Evolving Legacy, Transformative Therapy with a Body-Mind Connection. And the authors in this book are Nitsa Brody Miller, Leona Flamand Gallant, Julie Gerhardt, Mary Leslie, Anastasia Lundholm, Jennifer Nagel, Carolyn Nesbitt, and John Bamman has written the foreword for this book. And um, and with that, I will hand it over to Mary. Hope I can stay with you. I'm actually here in Banff, Alberta, and I've already lost you once and got back on. So hopefully I can get through the end. Um, I'm the editor for our book, and uh, I'm not noting that John Bannon has come back on, but I will introduce him and if he comes on later, we can we can plug him in. So our book didn't start with the idea that we would all get together and write a book. It started with uh, us joining a committee of the Satir Institute of the Pacific to upgrade the Satir manual, teaching training manual, so that everyone could have a little bit more uh, of our ideas about the body, mind and spirit as part of it. So this is, um, this we met with at John Bamman's house seven times, almost all of us who were on the committee, there's been a little bit of a shift along the way. And we met seven times and after two and a half years, we had explored each of how we were using the body as part of this process. And we're reaching an, a level of depth of, of understanding of, of Virginia's use of the body that was really quite profound for each of us and new in some ways. So we decided that we should write a book. <laughs> and uh, from meeting in person, we shifted to meeting on Zoom. Um, close to five to 50 Zoom sessions, I think, followed. 
it's been four years and a few months, um, but it's been really rich and um, it's, and we're all still friends, which is really amazing after that length of time. And it's been really a blessed experience for me. Um, the other thing I think is really important is the collaboration because we all came at it from a slightly different angle. And, um, and also, you know, as um, Barbara Jo Brothers has stated, who's ever learned how to do a holographic book or to write one? And Virginia's work is so um, uh, unlinear, nonlinear, that um, it really took time to figure out how best to convey these ideas and, and to bring ourselves together. So I just want you to look at the fact that um, we have uh, really benefited in the writing of this from our three elders. Um, and they are people that had been with uh, Virginia for a period of time. So I'll, I'll name them John, of course, we all know. And he had 18 years of close contact with Virginia. And he was present for almost 70% of our Zoom sessions. As a guide, as a cheerleader, he read our papers, he critiqued them, he helped us with them. He was very present much of the time. Um, Nitsa Brody Miller, whom I'm sure some of you know, and I hope will join us before the end, um, is a dance movement therapist um, in Palo Alto. And uh, she had worked very closely with Virginia for 12 years before G Virginia passed. And Leona Lamont Gallant, who's on our session this morning, um, met Virginia in the early 80s at um, the Haven at on Gabriola Island and studied with her for six years and um, continued to study with a lot of satir folks after that as well and is still practicing and doing um, family reconstructions in her home area of Nanaimo and she will you will hear from here shortly as well so we really wanted to start um, I my contact with Virginia was I saw her when I was in school social work um, in 1969 um, in Burnaby and witnessed her with a family on a stage. I think there were about 300 of us present and I was blown away. It was so different than anything I was learning at school. And I was so moved by her presence and her um, gentleness with the people, but also with their lack of awareness of us, which I think said a lot to do with her energy and, and her creating a bubble for them. I immediately went out and got con conjoint family therapy, read it forward backward and many times, and then came across her again at BGH, at Vancouver General Hospital, um, in just a few months before she died. And that was quite profound as well. By this time, I had much more um, awareness of her work and how she was working. Um, so these are my two experiences with Virginia and everyone else in our book group has been trained um, with through the Satir Institute of the Pacific. Anitza obviously joined us for many training sessions, but had lots under her belt before she came. And we have really um, embraced um, the wisdom of our elders very deeply in our writing. So I think from this point, um, I would just like to, uh, I was hoping to introduce John, but I don't think he's here yet. Is he Jennifer? No, he's not here. I don't see him. No, he's not here. So, um, at this, yeah. Okay. So I think we might just, okay. We'll just start with a, Leon, a, a, a tape from Leona and, um, and let her tell us a little bit about why she was so enthusiastic to join us about two and a half years ago and what she um and how she was a very strong supporter at a time when we were starting to lag a bit so it's really wonderful to um to have her here this morning and then we will have a tape of Nitsa and Jennifer will take it from there thank you question that uh, I've pondered on is how come the book became so important to me and I, uh, I just got really, because 
Uh, it is so important. I know. And that was the beautiful thing of the first time we talked. We just went, oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was the part when it when you first came. It was uh, I was in the, we were in the middle of COVID, and I'd been really pondering and thinking about uh, Virginia's teachings and and the way that she did people making and oh, the way she worked and her whole philosophy, and I felt that. She needed to be alive right now mm -hmm. and that the climate is here to hear the real depth of what she had what she brought into our world mm -hmm. you know and so I uh, was so excited when you came I know but what I what I really thought about at the time when um, we were in the middle of chaos. The whole world was in the middle of the whole world was in the middle of chaos. What a perfect thing! What a perfect thing that she would be saying so. She'd be so excited, you know. Like she said, you know, at, at one point when she was teaching us about the chaos, the change process, it was like if you do total, if you make a total change after the third or fourth time, it comes it comes to be really exotic, erotic. <laughs> and exotic, erotic, and uh, the idea of change, the idea of making it a, something totally different than what you were knowing it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. And the whole the whole idea was like when we were looking at what's happening with us in this last years to the whole world. It's like all of the systems that we have are crumbling. They're shifting, they're changing, they're crumbling. And most of the world that I see is pulling back into the status quo and doing what we've always done. And yet, the opportunity to collaborate to put thinking heads together to do something totally different is here. And your book, the book that you have, one of the things you wrote here was um, Satir was the most gifted therapist in the field. She knew human systems with her fingertips. What an amazing sentence. Mm -hmm. With her fingertips. She knew human systems. And to translate that into, because all of our systems are run by humans. And how come we can't change them? How come we can't say, we don't need this system anymore? We can try a new system, you know? And uh, one of the things that I, I think we haven't done in our world is really, really understand the depth of wisdom we have in our bodies. And this book is about that. Mm -hmm. I think we know the answers to what is a part of our world today. I think we know the answers. And I think she had the answers, like many other people have it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, here it is. This this book is here. Written by five amazing women. Add add one to the book, please. What? Add another one to the list. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, my, for me, it's just been so beautiful <laughs> to be a part add of one. this because it's like I knew all through that time that her teachings were present here. And not really acknowledged, not really seen. Mm -hmm. So I think in our world, some of the most important things that are here are not seen. Not recognized, not seen, not um, incorporated into the systems that we have. Yeah. 
Well, your excitement has been really important for us. It was important for me. <laughs> and um, and it, you bring such a wider perspective, you know, for all your years with her and how important she was to you. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll move right into um, Mitza Brody Miller. Okay. Okay. So I'll ask the question again. Okay. What has been most important for you about our writing of this book? Just a minute. <clears throat> um, I think there were several things that were important for me. Uh, one is um, to be able to put in writing some things that seem to be obvious and we kind of knew it for a long time, but to kind of give it a voice and clarify it. So that was one thing that was important. The other thing that was important was the collaboration between several of us, because each one of us came from a different angle and it created like a, like a, what's the word? Um, um, like a collage of ideas, you know, or a picture of ideas with a whole bunch of painters that are doing that. And um, um, and and it gave an opportunity to look into our ex personal experience from different angles, you know, and um, and include our own personal input into that experience because the model is a model. If you uh, if you look at it didactically, then the the information is the same but each person had an opportunity to interpret the information based on their own personality and also based on their own experience yeah and um, um i i think also the collaboration also uh, brought an opportunity to feed off each other you know, because my experience when I do something alone and write by myself is very different than when I work with other people. And I think the enrichment of information and the enrichment of ideas and images that that can come by when I'm working with live other people is much more rich and much deeper. That's my experience. And I like to do things in person much more than sitting by myself and writing. Thank you, Leona and Nitsa, for your words of wisdom and your sharing. Um, and um, I'm sorry that we don't have John with us. I, I hope he'll be back again before we finish. Um, John's presence was so appreciated and he does like to think of himself as our cheerleader and I think he really deserves that and much more. So I think where we're going to go from here is to have um, Carolyn, no, Anastasia, Anastasia uh, read uh, a poem that she has written that has been very powerful for us during our writing and for many others who've heard it. So I will let Carolyn take away Anastasia. her poem. <laughs> I am your body. And it's your pardon. <laughs> hey, um, your poem, I am your body. Thanks, Anastasia. Thank you, Mary, and thank you, Jennifer. I'm going to share with you a poem that I wrote quite a few years ago and, and kept it close to my heart for a long time because I knew that this poem was going to be published but I didn't know where, or I didn't know when or how it would be published, but it has traveled with me through the years. 
and I've shared it orally a few times, um, but I'm really happy to be putting it into print so that it can be distributed around the world. So I welcome you to receive this poem um, inside yourself in whatever way it fits for you. And you can experience this uh, like a hearing, uh, cognitively hearing it, you can experience it in a felt sense in your body. Uh, you could experience it in a variety of other ways, but I welcome you to manage that experience for yourself in whatever way fits for you. So I'm going to settle into my chair and take a nice breath to prepare myself and share with you. I am your body. I am your body. Together, we have seen and done so much. Inseparable throughout life. Everything you have felt, I have felt, we have felt. I've experienced all the emotions, the painful ones, the beautiful ones, and those you were not aware of. I have absorbed the repercussions of your thoughts, assumptions, and beliefs. You can hear this in my tone, see it in the way I move, in my shape, and the way my parts work together or don't. I have suffered and thrived as a result of your choices. So many times you've been unaware of me punished me for my limitations, or rewarded yourself at my expense. Many times I've been in the way of what you wanted to do. I may have screamed loudly or held my part in silence, but that does not mean I didn't feel anything. I hold the memory of every fall, accident, near miss, disappointment, fear, worry, hope, and longing. I have been the witness and companion to everything that's ever happened to you. My tissues are the crystallized matrix record of everything you think about yourself, about life, about relationships, and about the world. I would like to tell you how this has been for me. I understand you. I know you so intimately. You have no secrets from me. Through me, you experience yourself and your life. I hold all the secrets, the things you don't dare tell yourself. Sometimes I feel you don't understand me. I would like to serve you in the way you wish, but without a few changes, this will be impossible. I'm afraid we'll be doomed forever to work against each other, even though I'm doing my best to serve you. This causes me great pain. I would like to tell you about life from my perspective, so we might know each other better. Through knowing me and my experience, you will better know yourself. That will be good for both of us, for both of us. When you feel down, sad, or lonely, it's because we crave to be connected and loved. I know how to pull those strings so hard that it hurts, because you need love. I always want to motivate you to do anything it takes to remember you need love and connection. But sometimes you go the other way into isolation and self-pity. It's not my intention that you go there, but it seems to happen a lot. I wish so much good for you. It's my duty to keep you safe, to warn you of danger and help you cope with life. It's my job to make sure you survive. Most of all, I crave that you feel you are worthy, that we are worthy, that you feel loved and accept yourself, accept us. 
I admit sometimes my ways of communicating are complicated and it seems I'm saying the opposite. Making you feel bad is not my goal. I'm trying to help you remember. That's my job. I only want the best for you, for us. I am you and you are me. We continue to be inseparable. How do we heal together? How will we heal together? Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia. And now Julie and I will lead us in some experience within ourselves and our bodies. Hey. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I just feel like we want to just let those words, those powerful words of Anastasia's poem and the sacred space that's already been created with Carolyn's meditation and the words of our elder and Mary's sharing and just to be intentional in this exercise of how that's landing for you in your experience, in your energy, in your body, and to really to kind of bring it back to you in this moment. So whatever is your way of coming into your sacred space is my language, but whatever fits for you, maybe a heart mudra, maybe a a hand on your heart, maybe just an intention in your mind, but to uh, just conjure up and contemplate around compassion, the quality of love, maybe a nice deep breath again to let that infuse inside of you, whatever you feel would be nourishing in this moment. Sometimes it might be helpful to think of someone who is a source of love, a pet or special place in nature to really remember that even in your tissues, in your memory, in your body and your energy. And if it feels right, if you wanna just bring your hands up and let's just share that energy or that nourishment intentionally if your arms are able to do that or in whatever way that feels right and just connecting above the crown chakra above your head to your connection to the cosmos to the divine whatever it is the name for you of what supports you and then just like peacock feathers just letting your arms surround your entire sacred space in all directions, just feeling it, that you're infusing yourself. Yeah, it can be movement, it can be gesture. Feel that you're allowing energy to almost expand outside your body, inside your body. Notice the space behind you. Notice the space on either side of you in front of you, above you, and below you. Just really inhabit this as your sacred space. And then coming into a little more specific connection to your physical body, opening to all your senses. taking a pause to really listen to the wisdom of your body. As you're listening to the wisdom of your body, 
and inhabiting the sacred space within you and around you. See if you can allow, listen to your body and maybe give yourself permission to move your body. Maybe taking awareness away from the screen and just within you. Checking in whether it fits to stand, stay sitting. Maybe sculpting your body, flowing, dancing, gesturing. There's no right or wrong, just what is. Allowing movement or holding. And just notice what's happening inside for you. The sensations. The emotions. Allowing your breath to fill the spaces. Just being in touch with your connection with you, how your body is speaking to you, even if we don't understand the language, just being open and listening, following your body's energy. From this place of listening within the body, with inside. Also starting to come back to connection with others, with the room you're in. Maybe gently opening your eyes to land on something visual. Taking in the space, the physical space and the sounds that are in your environment. And then just looking to the screen and taking in this beautiful, the collective sacred space that we've created together, knowing that this beauty of Zooming together, we from all over the world, that we can connect from our hearts, from our bodies, from our energy. And I love when Carolyn mentioned that, like beaming from our heart. Let's just send a beam to each other. Into this whole space with gratitude, deep appreciation for yourself and your part in this universe and for each other. Mm. Beaming. We have some questions and discussion points as we will be moving into breakout rooms so that you can continue with your connection with each other. So I'll share my screen so that you can take a screenshot or jot these down. So as we move into breakout rooms, uh, connect with each other and share your experience of you in this process from this whole presentation, from um, your experience just now with Julie and I, from your experience with uh, I Am Your Body poem, um, from the whole morning or evening, wherever you are. How do the messages and experiences in this presentation, how do they fit with your understanding of the Satir model, Virginia Satir's model? And what are some ways that you would 
you could use more body mind connection in your own life, personally and professionally. So feel free to take a screenshot so you have the questions with you.